Hey everybody, it's Mike from Order Flows and welcome to this video on tick charts and flow edges. You know, as traders, we have so many different types of charts that we can look at. You know, we have time-based charts like minute-based charts, you know, even 30-second charts. And I know some people that look at five-second charts. You also got volume-based charts, tick-based charts, Renko charts, Heiken Ashi charts. You know, the list just goes on and on. But today, really, what I want to spend some time on is talking about tick charts. So unlike time-based charts like one-minute charts or five-minute charts, tick charts are not constrained by time. A bar on a tick chart is based on a particular number of trades that take place in that bar. So for example, if you have a 100 tick chart, there has to be 100 trades regardless of the volume. Okay, so and that's how they differ from volume-based charts is because they don't count the volume. That would be a volume-based chart. So if you're using a volume-based chart and you have a set of a thousand, there has to be a total of a thousand contracts traded for one bar to be formed. Whereas if you're using a tick chart, say of 1,000, there has to be 1,000 trades and the trade size can vary. So for example, right, just keep it simple. A 50 tick chart is going to be made up of bars that each have 50 trades in them. A trade can be any volume. A trade can be as small as one contract or it can be more. It could be three contracts, 10 contracts, 30 contracts, 100 contracts. Obviously, if you're using um, a volume based chart and you're, you're using, you know, say, you know, depending on the market, say you're using a, uh, you know, say you're trading wheat, right? And you've got a, a 100 volume chart and 200 contracts trade that would go over into two bars. But on a tick based chart, 100 contracts trade that's only counts as one trade okay so you're looking at the number of trades not the volume and not over a period of time you're looking at it in the bar now you can choose how many ticks you want to look at you can use say 25 ticks you know 100 ticks 500 ticks it's up to you but keep in mind when trading activity is busy you're going to see a lot of bars form in a short period of time so for example if you're using a 100 tick chart in the e-minis, you're going to get bars like every second, basically. So you're going to want to space it out. Whereas if you're looking at a 100 tick chart in a market like, say, euro currency, you know, you could take, you know, you'd be, you know, one bar can form in, you know, 30, 45 seconds, you know, maybe sometimes it could be, you know, two minutes. And, you know, during slow periods of time, like, for example, you know, after the market reopens at 5 p.m. and Asia doesn't open up for another couple hours. Volume can be very light and you might not get a lot of trades. So you might not see very many bars on a tick based chart. Whereas if you're looking at a minute based chart, you know, every minute it's just going to tick, tick, you know, new bar, new bar every minute. Whereas on a, a tick based chart, it's got to have those trades for it to um, form a bar. Okay. So uh, what are the benefits of tick charts? Well, I feel they allow you to get into moves sooner and spot potential market turns before they appear on more traditional time-based charts because you know, you're looking at a time-based chart. You got to wait for something to develop because it's based on time. Whereas when you're looking at a tick-based chart, you're really looking at trading activity in the market. And one of the caveats though of tick charts is you're going to find yourself much more active in the markets, meaning you're probably going to see more trading opportunities. And as a result, you're going to take more trades. All right. So it's tick charts, in my opinion, it's, it's not for everybody. And again, you know, that comes down to your personal choice. But, you know, I just want you to understand some of the benefits, some of the caveats of using a tick based chart. Now, the flow edges indicator, which is our new indicator that we've released, works great on tick based charts. I mean, it works great on all types of charts, but you know, I want to spend some time talking about tick based charts because, you know, usually I do my presentations, you know, I show things in minute based charts, but then, you know, people say, can you show this on a tick chart? You know, can you show it on, on this type of chart. So I, I want you to see how this tool works on other types of charts. So let me show you, let me uh, pause this here for a second and get up a chart. All right. So this is a British pound chart. So I'm going to show you it's the same settings. These are the default settings for the flow edge indicator setting at one for the flow edge level swing strength set to zero. And I'm using the trade signal entry 
meaning there's got to be follow through order flow in the next bar or bars for it to actually give you a signal. That's what these down triangles mean for a sell and the up triangles for a buy. So this is British pound 50 tick chart, all right, set at one uh, as the flow edge level. Okay, and you see some nice movements come in here, all right? Nice move down, a nice move up. You know, you just sort of take it back, you know, a little moves down. Again, you know, this one here probably would have stopped you out. So you take a small loss, but that's okay, right? Not every trade is going to be, you know, this big, beautiful trend here. I mean, these are the trades we love to catch, but sometimes due to market conditions, you're going to get smaller moves or you're going to have, you know, a chance to take a small loss or, or break even on a trade. But the key is to, you know, sort of keep your powder dry, right? Keep some bullets in the gun. So then when the big moves happen like this, you can participate in them, All right? So this is British pound. Again, I'm, I'm just scrolling back here. But I just want you to see these moves that occur in the British pound on a 50 tick chart, right? Nice move up. Again, this is that quiet period, you know, from the five o'clock reopen right in here until this is eight o'clock. This is three hours which you're not seeing very many bars, maybe about 20 bars, just because the market's quiet at that time. Whereas opposed to here during the day, you know, from, you know, this is what, 9.30 to 9 o'clock, you're seeing a lot more bars in this 30-minute period than in this three-hour period, just because it's not a lot of trades going through. Um, let's go back another day here. This is the previous day. This is the eighth, right? Nice move up, nice move down. Actually, the move down started from way up here in the 70s. Then you got a nice move up here just prior to that. Right, that move actually started in here, you know, from the 50 area all the way up into the 80s. Scroll back a little bit more. Again, you know, a little move here. Again, you know, you don't, just because you see the bar colored, right, for bullish flow edge, it would color it blue. For bearish, it would color it dark red. Now, again, you can change those colors simply by going to the indicator setting and you just change, you know, the bearish color. Say you don't want dark red, right? You know, you can change it to magenta or yellow or whatever color you want. But for now, default is set at dark red, okay? But you don't see the triangle, right? On the cell here, triangle, what you know, say, Mike, why is there not a triangle here? It's because it's using the trade entry signal, which is this setting enable trade signal trade validity in bars is two trade entry tick in bars is two so it means you have to have follow through order flow over the next two two bars you could set it to one bar you could set it to three bars four bars whatever you want but that's confirming in the price action the signal that you just got okay so that's why you don't see a blue triangle here or a red down triangle here that's why you don't see a red triangle here here you have the follow through order flow coming in this bar. That's why it's telling you to buy now. Let's go back a little further. Again, you, this is where some earlier buys here around the 06 area, all the way up into the 20s. You know, little sell here, a little buy there. But that was the previous day. Again, here's a nice sell here, a nice little sell here. Um, let's take a look at another contract. Let's, well, since we're on currencies, let's take a look at um, the euro currency. Okay, euro currency and British pound generally, generally, not all the time, you know, have sort of the same price movement. So, British pound was selling off a little bit today. So, I expect the same thing out of the euro currency. You see, it's trying to rally here, a little sell off here, a little rally here. Nice sell off here, you know, from the 04 area down into the 90s. You know, nice little buy here. These cells didn't work out. Okay, fine. Small, small losses. I could live with that for catching a nice move. Nice move down, nice move up. A little move up here. Again, just some small trades coming in here. A little move up, nice, beautiful move down. And this is a 50 tick chart in the euro currency. Again, you know, I don't want to talk about every single move, but I just want to show you, you know, some potentials of some of these big moves. You know, this move here from you know the 94 area all the way up into the teens. You know, 
So weight highs the day before. You know, just a nice methodical move up from 88. You know, this is 88, but this is 85, 86, all the way up to double O. So again, nice moves here and there. And a beautiful move here during the European hours. Um, okay, so yeah, let's take a look at another contract. You know, those two were currencies, but you know, I'm, let's, I'm sure you want to see how it looks on some other markets here. So let's take a look at crude oil. Now, crude oil, this is a 50 tick chart, so it might be a little bit quick, might be moving very fast. And again, you don't have to use a 50 tick chart. You can change it to 100 or 200. It really depends on your trading style. If you're a very um, short-term trader in and out a lot, you know, you're going to lower the tick level. But again, you know, I'm just changing the charts. Right? I'm not changing the settings, trying to fine-tune it for these markets. It's the same setting for each of these markets. You, know, you can see it's just happening right here. Right, It's just running up. Right, You got your buy signals coming in down here. And it's shooting up. You got a buy signal down here. It's going up. Again, you know, I, I don't want to talk about every single little signal here. I just want to show you. You know, I'm sure someone will say, well, you had this losing trade here. Well, it really the signal you're going to take is the first one, right? You're not going to, if you get a sell signal way up here, you know, on the 55 area, and then you get a sell signal 15 points lower at 40. Don't say, well, the 40 is a loser because you really should have been long from up there. Again, you can see how it's just starting to turn right here, right? It rallied up, it's starting to turn, boom, you get your sell signal. Just like here, it's rallied up, starting to turn, get your sell signal. Now, this is a 50 tick chart, it's pretty quick. You can just see the time, you know, 8 55, 26, 28, 30, 31. Sorry, 36, etc. These bars are coming in hot and heavy. So, on a tick based chart, when a market has got a lot of activity going on, you're going to get a lot of bars very quick. That doesn't mean you're going to get a lot of signals very quick, but it does open that up for it. You know, nice move here. That's why I talk about you know being able to catch these moves as soon as possible. Look at this literally, the bar right at the high. Is giving you the sell signal right from 07 look at that march down from 07 all the way down to 60s let me just go back some more you know a beautiful buy right here you know from the 55 area all the way up to the 80s this is just this morning this is just the last couple of hours in in crude oil just to give you an idea right i, I should just not talk so much and just go through the charts again you know 95 all the way up into the 30s i mean you do have some small trades here some small trades here there but you really want to participate when those big moves happen let's take a look during um european hours in crude oil okay four in the morning right here's a nice sell coming in here around the 65 area all the way down into the 40s and look at this move up. You got to buy here, but then you got the, you know, maybe this one would have stopped you out, or you take a small loss, or you take a few ticks. Then it came right back with this move from 40s all the way up into the 80s. Oh, look at that. Just during the European session. Again, you see those moves. Look at that move. Move down. Okay, so let's just go back to the previous day here. So this is the 8th. Okay, this is, again, same chart setting. I'm not changing it to find some cherry pick chart. I'm showing you different markets, the same chart setting. And look at this, you know, it's catching this whole move up here. All right, imagine you're getting long here from 55 all the way up into the 90s. You're just seeing these moves over and over, right? As soon as it turns, right here, telling you to get short. It's not telling you to get short when you break out of this swing low here. No, it's telling you to get short right now, just as you hit the swing high. 
where do you want to be getting short right after you hit the swing high or after you take out a swing low ideally if you get out after you hit a swing high it's going to give you a better entry and if you're wrong it's going to limit your loss because you're getting short near a high as opposed to getting short near a low There's just there's a lot of trades you know maybe a, a 50 tick chart on crude isn't for everybody you know, maybe some people want to use a 100 tick chart or a 150 or a 200 it really depends um you know on on your trading style you know if you're sort of a cardiac trader you know someone that wants to take a lot of trades then you're going to use a lower tick number okay but again you know you, you're just seeing these these nice moves happen over and over over the in different markets All right you want to participate them as often as possible okay so you're seeing some nice again, nice moves here boom nice move down nice move up go back to the European hours again right as the market turns right here right that's what you want to see is is these moves happen as soon as possible Okay, here you're getting short. Oh, maybe get long. No, get short again. Write it down. Okay, cover. Get long. Ah, oh, doesn't work. Get short again. 04 all the way down into the 70s. Okay, again, this is the overnight session. You're seeing nice moves up. And, you know, sometimes in these night sessions, they don't give you a lot of moves. The market does move, though. And, you know, you're only talking about a 20-point move here, a 20-point move there. But it's giving you that signal as soon as that swing low has been made or as soon as that swing high has been made, right? And, and that's what you want to see as a trader, right? You want to be getting into these moves literally as soon as they're happening, you know? Swing high, boom, get short. Swing high, boom, get short. Again, you know, you like ride these moves for as much as it can, you know, here, here, a little back and forth. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at another market. You know, a market that's sort of near and dear to me is the wheat market. 50 tick chart. This is this morning. Look at this move. You know, 771 all the way down to the 60s. Right. As soon as that high has been made here, giving you a short signal. Now again, you know, wheat doesn't trade as much as crude oil. This is just the day here, basically, you know, from there to there. But look at that. You're able to scalp this market, move here, move up here, move down here, move down here, back up, back down. move up move down move up move down so let's take a look at another market uh we'll look at mini dow okay because yeah this is interesting because I'm, I'm on a 50 tick chart okay so there's let's talk a little bit about the settings i don't want to make this too much about the settings today but this is again the default setting that comes with the indicator set to one and zero all right, so you can see here, right? It looks like there's a lot of signals. Oh God, you know I can't trade this, Mike, because look at this from 9:26 right here. Basically, to here you've got like eight bars. Okay, you got a lot of signals. And again, you know some people, you know they they want to see those signals. Now a way you can clean it up is you set the strength higher. See, Mike, that's too many signals. Well, then you set the flow edge level to a higher number three which means it's a stronger one okay and now you're seeing you know the buy here you're not seeing so many signals right? getting short in here right getting short from here getting long from down here okay a little stutter step here a little move here then boom just get you back going in that direction 
gets you back up in this direction. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is, is the swing filters. Um, you know, so if you have it at one, you could, you know, you could change the swing filter to one, or swing strength rather, to one. So one and one. Again, it cleans it up a bit. You're seeing this nice buy at the low here. Now you're not getting the sell here. You're getting the sell here. So imagine you're buying it in here around 20. 15 to 20 your first sell signal it's up here at 80 it's a 60 point move right you'll catch this sharp move down followed by this sharp move up getting short at 60 5 66 cover it at 16 right back up to where you got short at right nice move up here nice move up there so there's many different ways that you can use tick charts right you know, flow edges, in my opinion, is a great tool for using with tick charts. In the future, I'll be making a video, you know, using time-based charts and volume-based charts that you can compare. But, you know, if you're not already using tick-based charts, you might want to throw one up on your on your monitor, right? Monitors now are very inexpensive. If you have, yeah, you know, I see these people saying, oh, you know, you don't need many monitors to trade successfully. You know, you, you don't, but... There's no harm in adding another one just to keep an eye on something in the market, right? Nobody, you know, I, I hate these people that say, no, you have to trade this way. No, you have to trade that way. No, you, you trade the way that benefits you the most, right? So whether you're using one monitor, two monitors, three monitors, it's your personal decision, okay? It's like this whole hoo-ha with the vaccine. You know, some people don't want the vaccine, other people want to have the vaccine. You know, I have the vaccine. I'm fine with it. But there's other people, you know, I respect their choice. If they don't want to get the vaccine, fine. You know, it's just, you don't have to trade with one monitor. You don't have to trade with two monitors. I'm just saying, you know, if, if you are trading, there's no harm in adding an additional chart to look at, right? Because, you know, you might find that you start to move away from, you know, your time-based chart into something that is more conducive to how you want to trade. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. And again, you know, if you're interested in getting Flow Edges, go to www.flowedges.com or just click on click on the link below. So thank you and bye-bye.